When we had last left this cop, he and his partner Kim Kitsuragi had once again moved back to the motor carriage that belonged to his partner. And there did he decide to make an ill-fated choice to pick up the shortwave radio and radio back to his own precinct, asking for advice and reporting on the current situation, his missing badge, his missing gun, and his need for money. The precinct did not receive it very well, and neither did the cop, for in fact, he had a severe panic attack and was on the verge of some, perhaps, cardiac arrest and suffered a terrible, terrible experience and the suffering just continued on. Suffering uh, at every turn occurred. It was terrible. And so without out of the way, did they finally decide to go looking around the district known as Martinez just a bit more. And to the northeast did they find a racist lorry driver who was, as per his name, very racist indeed. <laughs> this is Disco Elysium. Welcome back. Let's continue looking for the pawn shop, right? Head on over here. There he is, the racist guy. Love it. No, I don't. He's terrible. Fuck him. Look, can I take this money? Or maybe... No, let's not do that yet. Let's go inside of here. Let's see. A lot of music going on over there, huh? You can sleep after 21 00. Sleeping heals all your health and morale. Wow. Holy shit. Is there like a limit to the amount of days in this game? I wonder. Like, will something happen if I fuck around too long? I don't know, because... Because time advances with... Dialogue. There's a set amount of time that can pass, right? Well, no, time also advances with reading. And you can rest on a bench or whatever, apparently, right? Maybe not. Or maybe you can thumb through dialogue you've read before in advance time that way as well? I'm not sure. It's all very... Very familiar yet unfamiliar at the same time. Man, this lady nearly has her tits out? Jeez. Alcohol achieve, it says there. That sounds like something I need. Let's look over here at this. Yellow roses. Dozens of them. Tulips, too. Is this a convenience store? Oh, but they do have alcohol here. And probably cigarettes. We should probably get both and kill ourselves. <laughs> Let's see, what's over in this? Knickknacks stand. You see several packaged raincoats fill a low shelf beneath a display of croissants and juice bottles. The raincoats are transparent, except for the big Frit slogan on the back. Now, didn't didn't um, didn't Kim suggest that we pick up a raincoat because it rains a lot here, or at least during the, it would rain a lot on this day? Huh. We cannot buy a raincoat. Wow, a raincoat gives us just plus one endurance. What does our current outfit give us? Doesn't it give us just like plus one... Our badass disco blazer or something. Our disco-ass blazer. It only has a positive effect to it, right? Nonetheless, could be useful to... Swap around our gear and all that, you know. Really game it. Fallout New Vegas style or whatever. Anyway, what's that? Point to the raincoat. Freet Clerk. What is what? The girl leans over the counter to see what you're referring to. Um, it's a raincoat? If you want to buy one, then it's only four real. She taps on the glass counter. The raincoats patiently await purchase. Okay. What's this? I can look at the radio. Is this a sad song? A melancholy pop song plays on the radio. I think every song that's played in this game has been some degree of melancholy. <laughs> How about this? Can I look at this? Oh. Saint Baptiste Pharmaceutics. A small cabinet on the wall is filled with various medicine bottles, nasal sprays, and blister packs. They all bear the Saint Baptiste Saint Baptiste, no P in there, Pharmaceutics logo. Um, just ask me if you need anything from St. Baptiste. We don't stock prescription meds, but we do have Nozafed, 
dralamine, magnesium, and hypnogamma. What do those products do? Um, I don't know. Let's see. Nosafed is a nasal spray. Dralamine, dralamine, is a really good painkiller. Magnesium is a dietary supplement. Really? Magnesium is? Hypnogamma is... She stops. I don't really know what Hypnogamma is. I guess it makes you feel less shit? It's recommended to... <laughs> I pleased myself with my own delivery there. It's recommended to use after lots of partying, studying, or exercising. Can you be a little more specific? Um... She chews her bubblegum absentmindedly. No, sorry. I'm not, like, a doctor or anything. Whoa. Tutorial agent. <laughs> Thanks, tutorial agent. Nosafed heals plus one health. Drowamine heals plus three m uh, health. Wow. We can get that much health? Holy shit. Magnesium. Man, also, that implies that we're going to take a lot of damage to these things, huh? Magnesium heals plus one morale. Hypno Gamma heals plus three morale. Okay. I don't really need any of this stuff yet, though. We're pretty well off. Who is Saint Baptiste? Maybe we'll need to bribe someone with, like, some drugs or something. Oh, maybe we could give drugs to the 12-year-old and get him to, like, pull down the body for us. <laughs> Saint Baptiste? You know, she nods at the cabinet. The Pharmaceuticals Company? St. Baptiste Pharmaceuticals? The one that sells meds out of St. Baptiste? She points to the cabinet. That one? There? <laughs> Leave. Okay. Can I look at these? Shimmering wall of vices. <laughs> A colorful display of cigarettes and alcohol bottles lines the shop wall, inviting you closer. Electrochemistry easy success. There, in that dark green glass, a world of ruby all in vain. The great flowing river of warmth. Wine alcohol, beer alcohol, love alcohol. I am in heaven. I need it all so bad. Say nothing. Just take it in. This is not a good place for a recovering addict. Not right now. Gosh, should we give in? Should we give in and get fucked up? I'm usually all for getting fucked up in games, but... Our dude is, like, about to die. <laughs> Fuck it. If things get bad, Kim will pull us out. <laughs> I am in heaven. Oh, no, wait. I don't know. Maybe I just want to say nothing and take it in. No, let's say it out loud. That way, that way maybe Kim will interject. I am in heaven. I need it all so bad. The clerk looks at the wall of goods behind her. Um, sure. If you want something, I can get it for you. Just let me know and pay and stuff. She adjusts her hat. What a weird hat. But I'm obliged to inform you that both alcohol and cigarettes... Damn it, your health. But I guess you already knew that? Or know that? Electrochemistry, medium success. Know this. You will never finish your alcohol quest if you don't buy beautiful alcohol. Shit, it's expensive. Huh. Oh, look. Substance use effects. Oh, wow. Plus one to physique, but minus one morale. Huh. It increases all of our physique shit? Huh. And smokes give us plus one int but minus one health. Oh, interesting. So alcohol reduces our morale, and cigarettes reduce our health, but they increase our physique and intellect, respectively. Do you sell any under-the-counter vices? No, she fixes her hair underneath her cap. Freet 
only sells legal drugs, like the law says. <laughs> Isn't that wild? Because <laughs> I'm a cop, you know? Please tell me more about these products. Um, the pale aged vodka is special, I guess. It's stored in pale for a couple of years, which makes it super expensive and super strong. What is pale? You know, she shrugs, uninterested in explaining it further. Electrochemistry medium success. Don't worry your pretty little head about it. Let's concentrate on what's important here. Okay, what will consuming this stuff do to my body? She stares at you, unsure. I mean, I already said it hurt you? I don't know what else they do. Tutorial agent. Drugs give powerful bonuses to your main stats while dealing damage to your health or morale. Cigarettes raise intellect while damaging your health. Alcohol raises physique while damaging your morale. Use medication, nosafed and magnesium to counteract this damage of drugs. Note, consuming drugs can have unforeseen consequences for you. Wow, awesome, sounds great. Maybe I want some unforeseen consequences and want to get fucked up. Unfortunately, I can't afford any of this shit. Okay. Let's see. What's this thing? An ATM? Alcohol achieve? A tear machine or tare? I have no idea. The tear machine tare machine stands in the corner. A sign says, one bottle equals 10 cents. Oh, is this like recycling? What is this machine? The clerk says, huh? The clerk looks up out of her magazine. Oh, that's the tear machine. Yes, but what is it? She knits her brow, confused. It's a machine for tear, you know. You find tear outside like bottles or whatever and put it in the machine. Then it gives you money. I see, and how do I pick up tear for the tear machine? Is it... Is it tay? Tear? Tear? Fuck, I don't know. <laughs> you need a bag, I guess? We used to have some, but we gave them all out, so... She shrugs awkwardly. Feel free to use it if you find a bag, though. I'm sure there are some... out there. She points outside. Somewhere. Okay. Can we talk to her directly and get unique dialogue from her? Hey. Welcome to Frit. Feel free to look around or something. Everything is out on the shelves. I was close enough, right? An Americanized version of that? She returns to her magazine. Conceptualization. Easy success. What's that magazine she's reading? I don't know. Is it pornography? It doesn't look like it. Before we go on, what is this Frit? I don't know. Frit? Frit? She shrugs. Why is it written with three T's? I think they think that the extra T makes it funkier. It doesn't. She chews on her gum with disgust. What magazine are you reading? You mean this? She looks at the cover, boasting a colorful photo of two girls kissing. Ooh la la. This is Maybe pop it stars. Is it's got like famous people in oh. it. It's not for sale. Stupid famous people. <laughs> How are we saying this? <laughs> I don't know the tone of this. I approve of this. Very futuristic. Tap on the girls kissing. How fucking on the nose are we? <laughs> I'm kind of tempted to just do it. I mean, I do approve of it, but you don't just go around saying, Hey, I approve of this. <laughs> Tap on the fucking shit. <laughs> I'm not even interested in that magazine. I don't know why I asked about it. <laughs> no, let's say, let's fucking let's say it. I approve of this. Very futuristic. She pops her raspberry flavored bubblegum and nods. 
the lieutenant frowns at you before turning to the clerk with an apologetic half smile. <laughs> this is like, this is like when being an ally goes fucking wrong. All right. Let's proceed. I have some questions for you. Um, okay. I'm not really supposed to be chatting to anyone, but... She puts down the magazine. Does Frit have a warehouse in the back of the Whirling and Rags? A warehouse? I don't know. Maybe? I don't really care what Frit does. Come on. Give me something to work with here. She looks up from under her brow. Fine. Frit doesn't have a warehouse. Just a little back room here, okay? She turns back to her magazine without waiting for you to respond. Can you tell me anything about the dead body? Um, I don't really know anything. I mean, I know it's there, but I haven't seen it. So, did you know the man? Did you know the man who died? Not really. Not really. Does it mean you knew him a little? Um, no, I didn't know him at all. How long has it been there? I don't know. Really long? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what do you think happened? Um, I don't know. No need to worry. The lieutenant's voice is soothing and professional. It's just standard procedure for us to ask around. If you hear anything, let us know. Okay? Okay. She scratches her nose. Thank you for your help. Uh-huh. She brushes a strand of hair off her face and tries to return to her magazine. Can you tell me anything about this reality we're in? <laughs> Fuck it. Reality? You mean... What reality? Economic reality or... Yes, tell me about the economic reality. No, I meant the physical reality. I mean, both would be valuable or fun information. Especially from her. Oh, you know what's really fucking rad about her art here? You see, because we're in the isometric perspective, we can really only see from like her cheekbones down to her chin. And the same is mostly true for this art here, right? Up here, toward like her actual eyes, it's very impressionistic and more obscured and less defined than like her nose and mouth. That is, I don't know, is that intentional? Because that is fucking wild. Huh. All right. No, I meant the physical reality. I don't know. What about it? Where are we? We're in Frit? Frit? No, I meant, where are we? On a larger scale? As mankind? As a nation? Or... As a mankind? In a good place? She rubs her face, thinking. I mean, science is doing great. And this radio computer thing seems to be kind of big? I don't know. She shrugs, then folds her magazine back. What time is it? I don't know. Look at the clock. It's right behind you on the wall. Perception sight. Trivial success. The clock shows the time to be 10.09. The hands seem to be still. It's apparent the clock doesn't work. I was wondering how they would do that because we have some measure of some time measurement device down here do we have a watch we don't have a watch do we how do we know what time it is do we have just like we got fucked up real bad but our internal clock is just holy shit so fucking amazing oh my god watch out kramer what is the revolution when ordinary people take over the government and um demand democracy what about the one we had here, in Ravishol? Yeah, it happened like 50 years ago or so. 
Sorry, I'm not very good at this. At history, I mean. She's nice enough. The Coalition. What's that? Someone told me there is one. Our government? Or do you mean something else? Sorry, I really need to finish this article. She taps the magazine on the counter. Oh, I won't bother you with this nonsense anymore. Oh wow, we got 5 XP for asking her about this weird shit. Cool! She seems happy to return to her reading. Okay. Oh, now I can't ask her about the economic reality. Alright, let's leave. Well, that was fucking weird. <laughs> let's get out of here. This is definitely not the pawn store. There we go. Maybe it's in one of our tasks and we should, um... Look back over some of our notes here. Let's see. Hmm. Find... Yeah, the cigarette quest, right? Find smokes and smoke them. No, that just tells me to put smokes in my hand and then use them. Okay. Maybe this? Cafeteria. Get a hold of a sad song on tape. No. Pissing competition. No. Okay. Jeez. I'm tempted to go over here, but we might advance time too much by getting involved in this. Right? I really need to find the, uh, the pawn shop. Maybe this is it here by the trains and shit? Could this be a pawn shop? What does this say? Humanox? Who is this person? Let's see. Actually, let's talk to this person. If we're gonna start talking to people in this area, let's move from, like, our first encounter and forward. What's up? The RCM in Martinez? What can I help you with? The young woman looks up at you. You sound surprised. We don't see a lot of police around here. That's all. I have some questions for you. Of course. What can I help you with? <laughs> what is this fuck the police business? Excuse me? She doesn't understand. Empathy, easy success. She's uncomfortable. Maybe you should drop this line of questioning. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> I kind of don't want to. This street sign says, fuck the police. Point to it. Oh? She cranes her neck. Well, I didn't write it there. I'm just sitting here. What about the other sign? Pigs go home. Who are these pigs? I don't know anything about that either. As I said, I didn't write it. Encyclopedia. Easy success. Pig is a widely used term for members of the police. It's not loving. Authority. Medium success. Even if she didn't write it, she could clean it. Jesus Christ. You could clean it up if you get a chance. Be a citizen. Be a winner. It's all right. I'm just asking. I'm just asking. Okay. She replies, shoulders relaxing. Fuck, I'm sorry. <laughs> there, another point in sorry cop right there. Let's see. Who are you exactly? Me? I'm just a gardener. Cool. And what are you doing here? Good to meet you, just a gardener. Another question then. <laughs> wow, what the fuck? Cool, and what are you doing here? I'm working. Working on what? I have a greenhouse in the yard there. She gestures over her shoulder. I've been trying to get some work done. Empathy, medium success. There's discomfort. She stops mid-sentence. Go on, it's okay. As you probably know, oh, there's a corpse hanging from a tree there. It smells pretty bad, so I have to take breaks. Jeez, they make you work with the fucking stinky-ass corpse hanging from the fucking tree? Good God. Oh, Kim speaks. Don't worry, miss. We're here to clean it up. You can get to work soon. Thank you. Maybe she needs to work. Maybe she's not in a position where she can, like, afford to not work, right? 
Like, you know, got fucking bills to pay or some shit. She smiles politely. My head is about to explode from all the salts I've had to inhale. Huh. Can I get some salts to inhale? We need directions. Since the street sign's messed up, she nods. Okay, what do you need? Where am I? What do you mean? I'm a bit disoriented. This is Ravishol, right? Yes, sir. District of Martinez. She looks around, thinking what else to say. This intersection is called Roundabout North. He knows where we are. He just wants directions. The lieutenant seems uncomfortable with the level of disorientation you are displaying. <laughs> what is up in the north? There's the pier, the Capeside apartment buildings, some more tenements. Not a lot, really. What is in the east? The harbor gates, some kind of commotion, I think. I don't follow the local politics, she shrugs. A Fritz store, too. What's in the south? Some shops and a bridge. The canal bridge leads to the coast, but it's broken, I think. Some kind of accident, probably. What is on the other side of the canal? Just coast. There's a little fishing village there, and a fish market, but that got closed down ages ago. Shivers, medium success. Rows of stalls under a broad roof, where silvery fish were heaped on newspapers. Water, water everywhere, pouring from the heavens, in the shadow of the old church. That's a, not the first time we had reference to this church in that area, right? Definitely seems like a location we're going to visit later, right? What kind of a fish market is this? Shake it off, you seem to be under some kind of cold spell. Huh. No, let's dive in deeper, I love shivers. What kind of a fish market is this? I don't know. The abandoned kind? It used to gather every spring. But there's nothing to do there now. Just drug addicts. What is in the west? She looks at the water, squinting. It's just water. No, actually, I think they call it the Martinez Inlet. There are some islands in the bay, but they're hard to reach. I wonder if we'll go there. Thanks, that's all for now. No problem, she nods, brushing a fleck of soil off her cheek. I have to run. Of course, I won't hold you back. She wipes her brow with a canary yellow glove. Inland Empire, medium success. Her gloves. You get the feeling that you need them. You have a dead body to deal with, after all. Oh, shit. One more thing. Can I borrow your gloves? Wow, she gave them to me. She's so nice. Holy shit. Not even just to borrow, just gave them to me. Sure, keep them. I have another pair. She hands you the rubber gloves with no visible annoyance. Thanks. I guess it's a good thing we were nice to her earlier. Can I equip gloves? Clothes. Plus one to interfacing. Okay. Great, I'm just gonna go around looking like a fucking doofus. Love it. Store of my fucking life. Over here, who's this smoking person? I am a gander and a hunter and a gatherer. Feel like a traveler. Oh, weird. Tommy Le Home. The man mutters to himself, accenting, accenting the beats as he goes. Keep listening? I am the law! <laughs> What's going on here? Keep listening. From another planet. Hey there. He finishes and turns to you. What's going on here? It's the jam, my man. Oh, this guy's disco. Okay. He motions toward the sprawl of lorries, with a sweeping gesture. What's the jam? It's a traffic jam for the ages. Oh. Harbor gates of the street are shut tight, no explanation given. Workers on strike, scabs agitating. 
An all-around cluster fuck. Fuck the scabs. Meanwhile, we're all stuck here in long-haul limbo. For days upon days upon days. Upon days. He glances south, down the road. Limbo, huh? So that's where I am. So how long have you been here? Let's lean into this, why not? Limbo, huh? So that's where I am. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so how long have you been here? Feels near forever. Like I was born on this here roundabout and this was all I ever knew. Just me and the metal and the tires, the oil and the fumes of mazout. Dude, tires spelled with a Y. Should have seen that coming with the mention of lorries, right? Extravagantly phrased, but I can roll with it. I don't quite understand what you just said. Could you say it again, only a little less plodding? Now, we're dumb, right? We have two int. I don't understand. I don't quite understand what you just said. Yeah, imagine. It's been a whole week already. <laughs> he snickers. What? <laughs> Empathy, medium success. Behind the laugh, however, a touch of sorrow. So tell me, what do you need? Oh shit, can I bump some smokes over this dude? Got any smokes on you? Nope, don't smoke. He nods toward the big lorry behind him. <laughs> I think I just saw him smoking though, right? Yeah, he's smoking right there. Some of the other drivers do though. There's still a few around, waiting for the jam to disperse, or waiting for the sweet release of death. Perception medium failure. Yep, nothing wrong with that statement. Your senses have nothing to add. You'll have to ask around elsewhere. <laughs> wow! We're so fucking bad at perceiving shit, we can't see this man smoking in front of our very eyes. Guess I'll ask around then. Tommy Lahom. You could also check the kiosk down the street. Frit? He points toward the harbor. With the three T's. Ravishal is weird. Hmm. Care to spare some change for a working stiff? Maybe he's got money. Huh? Sudden financial duties snap him out of his days. Oh, no, I ain't got any money. They don't want to pay me for unfinished work. They who? The bosses, man. Makes sense. First work, then pay. I don't know who these bosses think they are, but that sounds like a good arrangement for them. So, you're broke. Got it. What else did I have to ask here? Hmm. Makes sense. First work, then pay. You know what? Yeah, I don't know who these bosses think they are, but that sounds like a good arrangement for them. Yeah, it sure ain't good for me, or you. I'd spare a coin or two for a city cop down on his luck, if I had, say, four myself. Let's see, tell me more about this strike. It's like, whatever's going, over, going on over at the docks. Workers, got a blockade set up, making demands, no way in or out. What's the union demanding? Some pretty wild stuff, I hear. Like a giant new power crane and half the company? I forget what exactly. Good on them, I guess. I've heard talk there's a company rep in town too. Like a strike negotiator type. They'd know what's up. Precise demands and so on. Yo, are they fucking Pinkertons? Ah, uh, yes. From the Wild Pines. He takes a note. Right, the sleeping man. We'll meet her soon enough, I'm sure. What do you think the company wants? They want to keep that money flowing in, my man. He makes a ka -ching sound. Anything else I should know? Anything else, he thinks. Yeah, this ain't really my area of expertise. I just do my job and get paid. I have things to do and places to be. All of us do. All of who? Us lorry drivers. Kami on noise. A few still hang around here, waiting for this mess to end. Most have scurried off somewhere. To get drunk, or high, or laid. He smiles awkwardly. Not that I blame him, really. Not you? Not my thing. Chasing transient pleasures is a drag these days. I prefer the examined life now. 
Zinking, reflecting, observing. He glances down the road, toward the horizon, a glint of something in his eyes. Electrochemistry medium success. What's better than chasing transient pleasures? The more transient, the better. When one's ended, you can get on to the next one. Jesus. Know anything about the dead man? The one hanging behind the hostel there, point at the yard. He ain't one of us, drivers. I know that. All accounted for. Otherwise, I haven't really asked about that. Been wasting time right here. Keeping busy. Drama. Easy success. It's easy to see he's telling the truth. He's kept his nose out of the dark stuff. Busy with what? Analyzing the fundamental structural and psychological conditions of being stranded in the midst of a sea of motor lorries and their sad, despondent chauffeurs. Wait, what? Nothing, he smiles. I'm just wet messing with you, man. Don't mind my idle vi verbosity. I appreciate this guy. What are you hauling anyway? Oh, high-grade narcotics, illegal firearms, stuff like that. Authority, medium success, time to arrest him. You're under arrest. Wicked, I always wanted a friend in the underworld. Okay, what are you actually hauling? Now nah, let's play with him. Wicked, I always wanted a friend in the underworld. Ha, no, I'm joking, my man. He grins. F-A-L-N, Fawn, runs a nice, clean business. This haul of cargo is mostly sporting goods. You know, tracksuits and that kind of thing. They usually get shipped to Grodd and the Occident. The Occident? Didn't that guy call himself an Occidental? The racist lorry driver? Though we've, and he also called me one, didn't he? Huh. Though we've been making headway in the Ilmaran, Ilmaran market lately. So nothing illegal then. That's your machine behind you? Oh shit, I can maybe get a tracksuit from him? Could I get one of those fallen tracksuits you're hauling? We're pals and all, but I can't just freely hand out the merchandise. The bosses won't be happy. That's your machine behind you? This rockin' beauty? Wow, he really did point. He points at the lorry with his thumb. Sure is. Like a rash you can't get rid of. You interested in heavy-duty cargo machinery? Yeah, these lorries are pretty neat. Interested? Not really. I just asked because... I don't know. Must be a cop reflex. I guess they're neat enough. Hmm, I'm not sure. <laughs> Are they that neat? I'm like 50 or 40 years old, so maybe not. <laughs> maybe if I were like 30 or 50 year, or 30 or 40 years younger, right? Then they'd be neat. I don't know. Must be a cop reflex. Yeah, must be. Your job's to know all those little things, isn't it? While my job, he pats the back of the lorry, is to deliver tracksuit trousers. Empathy, medium success. There it is again. A little touch of sadness beneath his cool. He thinks he spent too long in this lorry. Jeez. So nothing illegal then. Not unless they've illegalized sports equipment while I was on the road. Right, I had another question. The man taps his fingers rhythmically against his arm. Oh, empathy, formidable. What do you see in his eyes? Shit, I failed it. Empathy, formidable failure. Ease into it, don't go too far. This seems like a personal matter. Man, you look sad. What's going on with you? Hey Tommy, spill the beans. What's troubling you? My man, I want to know about your soul! <laughs> Man, you look sad. What's going on with you? I'm okay, man. Just... The jams got me down. The fumes, the chemical rainbows... The tarpaulin stretched on the frames and the dull engines off. 
the man recedes into his days of words. Maybe the full-on direct approach wasn't correct. Damn, it's tricky business looking into someone's eyes and not doing it wrong. Alright, well we can come back and look into his eyes again. I'm good for now. Good talk. Don't be a stranger. He gives a salute with two fingers. Alright, should we talk to this other person over here? Isn't there someone else around here? Oh, I lost them. Maybe we should go over and check for the fucking... What do you call it, place? The pawn shop before it closes. Yeah, definitely. It's already, what, 3.12 in the afternoon? Okay, is this a pawn shop? Maybe? Crime, romances, and biographies of famous people. No, that's definitely a bookstore. Right? What the fuck? Let's see. We're just gonna keep going till we find a pawn shop. Man, we're going pretty fucking far. This doesn't look like a fucking pawn shop to me. Oh look, it's some more graffito. Wow, a boat. And a dude on it. Hey, up here, piggo. Can I talk to that guy from here? Yeah, you better keep walking. Huh. Maybe I'll leave him be. I don't want to get involved in it. Let's see. Can I go all the way down here? Oh, if I double click and then hold. Maybe this is a fucking pawn shop. Maybe I don't know. Fuck it, let's go in. Skill points can also buy new thought cabinet slots. Or forget old thoughts. Oh, wow. Maybe this is a pawn shop. What? Look at all this weird shit in here. Well, it also looks like a lot of weird shit, but maybe it's book decor. What's up? Welcome to Crime, Romance, and Biographies of Famous People. My name is Plaisance. Plaisance. The clerk extends a greeting. Be welcome. And please take responsibility for the energy you bring into this space. Uh-oh. <laughs> Oh no, of course our Inland Empire is vibing off the shit. Inland Empire challenging success. What is that? Challenging is 12. A golden pendant hangs around the woman's neck in the shape of what looks like a tiny fish head trapped in amber. Before we go on, you seem to be well off enough. Can you give me some money? I feel like there won't be an opportune moment to ask later. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, can I have some money? Sir, don't be ridiculous. I certainly will not give you money. I would be doing you a grave psychic disfavor. She gives you a disapproving look. One has to earn one's success, even if one is a police officer. Handouts are nothing but manipulation. All they do is make you dependent. Oh, she's awful. <laughs> Authority success, medium success. What is this insolence? She misunderstood. You misunderstood me, or misunderstand me. I'm a powerful feudal lord. I demand tribute. This is about traditions. <laughs> Honestly, maybe the last bit would appeal to her. This is about traditions. <laughs> no, that's not me. Fuck off, authority. Of course. No one puts words in your mouth. Ugh, authority, you freak me the fuck out. Part of me wants to just play... Like, even a similar character, like if I just went with the same build as, I'm, as I have. Except lean into authority and be just a complete piece of shit. Okay. A curious pendant you're wearing. Narrow your eyes mysteriously. Maybe I can get it from her by appealing with, um, Inland Empire, right? Oh yes. Helps to have an anchor in these times. She clutches the pendant and narrows her eyes as well. So are you the owner of this store? I am. The proudest owner of our little shop of culture. Her voice is high-pitched, as if to give it more penetration. 
suggestion, medium success. She has fine-tuned her voice to find the most welcoming approach for attracting new customers. It doesn't work. <laughs> what if I want to buy a, a book? Oh, I didn't ask about the, the girl outside. Maybe she's related to this place somehow. What if I want to buy a book? Then why are you talking to me? Everything... I said we wouldn't do this, but I can't help it. Especially with her. Everything is on the shelves to browse. Don't you feel compelled to buy anything? She fiddles with her pendant, then waves her bony fingers directly at you. See those shelves there? Go. Be drawn. So what types of books do you have? Everything is on the shelves. Take a look yourself. She nudges her glasses. The shelves compel you, don't they? All right, I'll take a look then. She smiles and nods, seemingly relieved. Who's the little girl standing outside? Annette, yes. My daughter. I hope she wasn't slacking off again with her nose in science fiction. Tell me, was she at her post, doing her job like a proper girl? Yes, of course. No, she was definitely slacking off. It doesn't matter. Now, tell me something else. I mean, I didn't even check on her, but sure, she did. She was fine. Wonderful. Did you talk to her? Not really. Why not? Was she not friendly enough? Were you not compelled to talk to her? I don't know. I just walked right in here instead. I'm not interested in talking to a kid. I was afraid she'd call me- <laughs> Like all the kids around here. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> Good lord, but it is at the expense of the kids. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. I don't know. I just walked right in here instead. That's true. She lightens up. Oh, yes. Okay. That makes sense. It's working then. Yes. Do you brow do browse our books, sir? The way you're handling her strikes me as wrong. Annette is quite the trooper. She's a great value add. I'm here to dismantle the free market and abolish child labor. I mean, honestly, hell yeah. Okay, let's change the subject. Fuck it, let's say this to her. I'm here to dismantle the free market and abolish child labor. She rolls her eyes. You must be kidding. There's nothing like that happening. Depends. How much do you pay the kid? Good sir, what does a young child do with money anyway? No, I save it for her as a fund. She's securing her financial future out there. Wow. Continue. Authority medium success. Slap the cuffs on her. <laughs> I formally reprimand you for your corrupt activities. Oh, I guess I was mistaken. I don't know. Maybe I want to reprimand her for this. <laughs> what the fuck will happen? Fuck it. For once, I'm actually giving in to authority here. I formally reprimand you for your corrupt activities. Will Kim, like, step in and say, Oh, sorry. He's had... <laughs> he's in a way today. I formally reprimand you. She raises an eyebrow. Oh, of course, officer. Good work. Are we done with the jokes now? Yes, we've had quite enough fun here, right? The lieutenant taps his foot. <laughs> okay. The way you're handling her strikes me as wrong. Mind your own business, sir. Her posture becomes very rigid. In our society, people don't get to tell each other how to raise their children. It's none of your or anyone's business. Okay, let's change the subject. The woman before you scans the store, her shoulders rigid and tense. Every now and then, she nudges her glasses. Farewell for now, book peddler. And look, I have a thought. Rhetoric. Hey, psst. Who, me? Yes, you. Word, oh no, <laughs> they found me out. <laughs> 
Yes, you. Word on the street is, you're ready to start building communism again. Again? How come there's word on the street? Again? Yes, you're ready to start building communism again. You've built it before. They've built it before. Hasn't really worked out yet, but neither has love. Should we just stop building love too? Can't argue with that. Yes, we should all stop building love. Love has worked out really well for me. I'm a love winner. <laughs> Can't argue with that. So, what about all that communism you've promised to build? Word on the street is, you've woken up from a thousand years of slumber, promising to erect a version of communism many times greater than any attempted before. Is that true? How come there's word on the street? You keep saying things like, down with the bourgeoisie, eat the rich, sodomize the landowners, impale all people who have more than 25 real in their pocket, literally murder all human beings regardless of their political beliefs, that kind of stuff. All right, that sounds like me. I haven't said anything like that. I've said some mildly left-wing things, but none of those. Hmm, should we be honest or lean into it? I'm not sure. It feels like no matter what, this decision here isn't going to back us out of anything, right? Similar to our last thought. I'll say this, I've said some mildly left-wing things, but none of those. Oh yes, the mask of ambivalence. Don't deny it. You're about to rip it off and reveal the monstrous, seven-eyed lamb of global communism that will devour and masticate mankind. Is that what's going on in this picture? Is that it? And the mask has been revealed? Everyone can see that. So tell me, do you have any questions before we fire up the big communism builder? Or do we get right down to it? Wait, first, what's this communism even about? Roll up your sleeves and start building communism. Opt in. It's too tiring. I don't have it in me. I'm beat down and broken. Opt out. Wait, first, what's this communism even about? Failure. It's about failure. Failure? I don't do failure. Failure? Yes. Abject failure. Total irreversible defeat on all fronts absolutely vanquished beaten curb stomped and pissed on until you came along you will reverse the fortune of the workers of the world oh god this is grim <laughs> i see what you're doing okay you alone against every living thing against every human alive, 800 trillion real in the hands of an impossibly well-organized ruling class, towering city blocks of bank men who have the ears of prime ministers, million-headed armies of nations, and the love of your own mother. You against the atom, the charm, and the spin. Where the world failed, where the whole world failed, matter failed to bend to human will. Human will failed to get out of bed and tied, tie its laces. You alone, single-handedly will rebuild the dreams of the working class. You are <gasps> the last communist. Now get to work, comrade. Well, let's roll up our sleeves and start building communism. Oh yeah, get the firing squads and the animal wagons ready. Wait, what firing squads? You didn't say anything about those. Too late to back out now. You can't make an omelet without breaking a few million eggs. Roll your sleeves up further and breathe in the pristine air. Finish thought thought gain. <laughs> Great. 
Mazovian socioeconomics. Oh, look, there's a whole description and thing here. Three hours only. Minus two visual calculus. Looks like reaction. Problem. People think communism was some crazy idea that had its comeuppance 40 years ago. A fever that shook the world and never to return again. They were right. Until he woke up today. A spiritual corpse responsive only to the call of Commodore Red, prostitutes, and Krasmazov. For him, communism is still a thing. He will single-handedly raise the commune of O2 from the oceanic trench where it has been resting, covered in ghosts and seaweed. He is the big communism builder. Come, witness his attempt to rebuild communism in the year 51. Great. <laughs> Sounds awesome. <laughs> okay. I guess we did get quite a few communism points talking to her, right? <laughs> and all the other people. Okay, great. Well, you know what? I suppose when next we come back, maybe we'll speak to her daughter outside? Because I feel like although she is definitely not the pawn shop, we should get the context for this whole side quest? Situation? I don't know. I feel like we should definitely speak with her. Anyway, until next time... Please take care of each other.